Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Christopher, thanks for the generous introduction and kind introduction. It was great meeting with you a year ago. And, um, you know, this Zoom meeting, I think Riley said it. He said it's efficient, but um, it's impersonal. So I'm not used to doing Zoom meetings. I'm used to being in person. So this is my first one. So forgive me if I stumble a little bit. I'm going to try to make this as polished as possible for you all. I usually dance into my presentations, but this office is small, so I can't quite do that. So we're just going <laughs> to just skip that part. Maybe do some chair dancing later um, to get into this. Uh, let me just share my screen. And... Perfect. Okay. Perfect. And I can see, just want to make sure I can see your chat. One second. Perfect. All right. We are ready to go. Do you see my screen? Yep. Everybody sees yep. my screen? Yep. yep. Perfect. So, yes. So, Something that's a, uh, okay. what we should do before a presentation because it is early in the morning. I don't know if you've heard the song, but it's pretty fun. I'll just go for a little bit. Just give me a second. Have you heard of Michael Franklin before? I don't know. So we, today, are going to power up and pop it with LinkedIn. So what does that really mean? Um, LinkedIn can be misunderstood, it is definitely a business tool, and there are ways that you can definitely amp up your profile, make sure that you can get some business leads, and it's probably not the way that you think. So today, that's what we're going to get into. So this is how you participate, and I think Tom mentioned this already once, mute your microphones, please, if you haven't already, with this many people in a room together. Um, it's going to be important for you to mute those. Um, if you have questions, please type them into the chat box. Um, I can't see all of your videos. I don't know if everybody's on video. I only see a few. So um, Tom is going to be liaisoning with me at the end so that I can answer your questions. And then at the end, if um, I haven't answered your question, you can email me your question, Kimberly at marketingrx.ca, and I'd be happy to answer that um, after this presentation. So my question for you is, which came first? And so feel free to type in your answer, because I want to hear what you have to say. Was it Facebook, LinkedIn, or Twitter? Who came first? Onto the scene. Onto the social media scene. First. Okay. LinkedIn, Facebook, LinkedIn. I'm going to see. I'm going to get a few more answers. Facebook, LinkedIn, Facebook. LinkedIn. <laughs> you know, it's, it's interesting. I looked this up a, a number of years ago, and I was actually surprised by the answer. So if you said Facebook, Facebook launched in 2004. It launched as a, uh, like a dating website where <laughs> people in high school could sort of see each other and, and thumbs up or thumbs down, um, and then became this massive platform in 2004. But LinkedIn was before that. LinkedIn indeed was first. So if you said LinkedIn, virtual high fives, congratulations, you got that one right. LinkedIn launched in 2002. Twitter was last, well, last of the three. <laughs> Since then, there's been a lot more that have come on board. But Twitter launched in 2006. So can you believe it's been that long? It's been since 2002 that we've had social media. So it's not new at all. It all started 18 years ago with LinkedIn. And things have changed dramatically over the years. And the opportunity for us to power up and profit is here for us all. So are you on LinkedIn? So I want you to, again, type in the chat box if you are yes on LinkedIn. Just type in the chat box, yes or no. Okay, lots of yeses. Yes, you're on LinkedIn. Okay. 
Yes, but I don't use it much, Craig. Okay, that's okay. So I also want to ask if you are an avid user. Um, so type yes if you are on at least once a day and you're commenting and liking other people's posts once a day, at least once a day. Yes, yes, what? no, okay, okay. Brian, no, okay, yes, no. Okay, so here's the thing. LinkedIn is one of those things that um, it's just, it can seem like another place for you to um, have work to do. Like you have to go on there, you have to um, post something, maybe interact with people. I'm gonna make it easy for you to go ahead and do that. Um, type um, yes, if LinkedIn is a confusing place to be. Okay, it's confusing. Gerald. Okay, that's okay. That's why we're here today, um, is to sort of talk about LinkedIn and what the benefits are and make it easy for you to amp up your profile and, you know, grow your network. Because I think that's the biggest um, point on LinkedIn is that you can grow your network in a major way and you're not spending a lot of money. Yes, you are spending some time, but you're investing it. So what is, sorry, what is social media? Now, as Wikipedia defines it, it says it's websites and applications that enable users to create and share content or to participate in social networking. So I want you to understand that, get that point. Create and share and participate in networking. It's not to sell. Okay, social media originated as a way to interact with friends and family, but was later adopted by businesses which wanted to take advantage of this popular networking communication method to reach out to customers. Um, you know, you're able to connect and share with people around the world, which is incredible. I have friends kind of all over the world. I have a LinkedIn friend in Sweden. I have another friend uh, that's in Scotland, I have friends in San Diego. Globally, there are more than 3 billion social media users. It's an ever-changing, ever-evolving platform, which is why it can be a little bit confusing. And did you know in 19, or in 2019, LinkedIn reported 610 million members. That's million and 202 million active users, 40% deliver or are on there daily. So it's a huge network, it's a huge playground. But what does that mean for you? This is my favorite line, sorry to swear, but it's called social media, not sell my shit media, quote unquote. And I wanna to touch on this because I like to think about social media networks as parties. So Facebook is like the keg party, um, Twitter is the cocktail party, and I would say that LinkedIn is like the business breakfast. It's the ultimate business breakfast. And so when you walk into a business breakfast, what are you doing when you walk into that room and you don't know anybody, or you know some people but not everybody? Are you just gonna go around there and yell at people and tell people what you do and look at me and look at me? You know, like Christopher, when you and I met over at the ACG conference, I didn't go, hey, I'm Kimberly and here's what I do and here's what I, you know, buy my services and no, you're, you're going there to connect. And so social media is misunderstood because it's treated like traditional media. Traditional media is a push medium. So what that means is you are pushing out your information. Here's what I do. I am a social media expert. Here's what we do. Social media management for companies and ad campaigns, etc. That's what you're pushing. Social is a pull medium. So what you're wanting to do is pull people into the conversation. Um, traditional medium talks at people and social media pulls people to talk with them. So that's a big difference with social media. So I just want to reiterate that that it's called social media. So getting social is the point. And really the secret to powering up your influence is in the conversation. It's in the conversation. Let's think about that for a second. Nothing happens until a conversation is started. When's the last time you bought something and you didn't have a conversation about it first? Okay, well maybe it was groceries or maybe it was 
um, beer or wine at the liquor store. That's an easy one. But if it was something new, you probably had a conversation first. And you need to build that relationship with that brand before you're going to do business with them. And so speaking of relationships, it's important to discuss the customer life cycle. Has anyone seen this before? It's a circle. And so what happens is most customers start in the know, like, and trust phase of this customer life cycle. You build, you build your credibility, trust, and influence in this zone. And social media is the perfect place for you to be to grow this part of your business. Then when the customer knows, likes, and trusts you, then when they need your product or service, they're going to try your product or service. They may buy from you. And then if they really like what you've provided, they might repeat and then refer, which is the ultimate. But too many people want to jump right to the buy. <laughs> you know, as business owners, we're like, we're selling something. Come on, like, buy from me, buy from me. But if you do that, often customers are going to be turned off. We really don't like hard sell here in Canada. Um, and the other issue with skipping that no like and trust phase is the customer won't be loyal to you and will switch for a lower price or something easier. So I would advise, please don't skip the no like and trust stage of the customer life cycle. This will create long-term raving fans for you and loyal customers that will continue to want to do business with you and tell everybody about you. It can be a huge ripple effect for your business if you do it the right way. And be an active participant in your community, you know. Um, Play, advise, add value, educate, inspire, influence, do all of those things that um, make you a person. And, you know, think about, so whenever I go into social media, I try to think about, okay, I'm speaking to one person in my social media community if I'm posting or if I'm going out and actually commenting on somebody's, that means I'm actually going in there and adding value and educating. I'm not going in there and trying to sell my services. Maybe I'm recommending somebody else, but I'm not in there just so um, self-absorbed and, oh my gosh, I have to sell. People can sense that desperation in you, so you don't really want to come across that way. So can you add that value and educate and inspire and influence? Um, oh, that was a really fun video and it's gone. So. <laughs> My technology is awesome most of the time. Okay, so super, and you can supercharge your engagement and influence with the reciprocity factor. So what, I, what do I mean by that reciprocity? What do you want more of? Give that to your community. So for example, you want more likes on your posts like other people's posts. You want people to share your content, go ahead and share their content. Do you see what I'm saying? Um, you know, whatever you want people to do, start doing that for other people. You want referrals, refer other people. So that just creates this um, share and share alike um, environment for you so that you can start to be noticed people go oh that person is liking my stuff they're sharing my stuff maybe I should see what they're doing and I'm going to do the same and I like to say always be connecting and conversing so think a b c c not in the regards of selling because I used to sell radio and they would say always be closing which I never was I was really good at it because I was more about connecting <laughs> and conversing. Um, but really, be connecting, be conversing. Don't just talk at people. Um, you know, speak in a language that you speak. I heard a tip the other day that said, you know, record yourself speaking in a note and then see how you're speaking because that's a lot more engaging than sort of writing it like it's a professional article or something. Social media is about your true voice. Um, find people to connect with. Find groups to follow. Um, how can you create a community that you love and know and want to thrive in similar to what you have here at Vantage? 
um, can you do that on LinkedIn? And so the question is, is LinkedIn worth the effort? Because some of you on this call had said, you know, you're there, but maybe you're not actively there and you're not really doing too much on this network. So here's why it is worth the effort. 90 million users are senior executives. That's huge. And 63 million of those are in, or another 63 million are in decision-making positions. Decision-making positions. So they're gonna see you, they're gonna see your content, and maybe they need your product or service. More than 50% of the traffic is to, uh, to B2B websites comes from LinkedIn. 50% is massive. And if you aren't on LinkedIn, I have to tell you, it's likely your competitors are, and they're eating your lunch, because why not be there? Why not take advantage of this huge playground with decision-making positions and people who can actually do business with you? And I find oftentimes that people who insist they are not on LinkedIn can often, or are not on social media can be found on LinkedIn. You know, you talk to somebody, oh no, I'm not on social media, I'm not on social media. Are you on LinkedIn? Oh yeah. So it's almost like LinkedIn isn't treated like a typical social media network because it is more of a business network. Does that make sense so far? Okay, perfect. So now I wanna talk about how to power up your personal profile on LinkedIn. The first thing I want to talk about is your avatar. That is your profile image on LinkedIn. The sizing for that is 400 by 400 pixels minimum. It can be bigger than that, but you want to make sure it's kind of in that square format. You can edit it. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, but yes, you want that avatar to be the photo or image that you want people to see when they first meet you virtually. Please make sure it is not a iPhone photo where you have a thumbprint on the lens and it got real blurry. Don't do that. Make sure it's not dark. Make sure, um, you know, it's an image of yourself that portrays what you want the photo to say to people um, when they see your profile. Because that's the first thing people are going to see when they search you on LinkedIn. Make sure it's a high resolution photo is what I would recommend. Um, and if you need a good corporate headshot, reach out to me. I have a couple of great photographers in Edmonton that don't charge a ton, but do excellent work. Think about the season two. Um, you know, right now I've got an avatar that has like some blue in it and it's really pretty, but maybe in the winter time, um, it might be with some red in it. Um, I put a Santa hat on me for Christmas time, whatever it is. So think about um, seasonality. And then also, maybe you want to experiment with the type of avatar you have. So one that maybe is a smiley avatar, and then maybe one that's a little more serious. So, you know, play around with which ones are going to be best for you. Next is the banner. So that is like a really thin little banner at the top of your personal profile. I'm going to hop over and show you in a minute. Sizing is a little tricky. It's 1128 by 121, which is really, really thin, but you can use a program like Canva to design one for free. So I really like Canva. It's very easy, but you want to keep in mind that your avatar is going to overlap your banner on the left-hand side. So just be careful when you're designing that one. Also in the about section, use terms you want to be found for. So for example, you know, if you want to be found for sales or being a CEO or being a commercial lender, whatever terms you want to be found for, put those in your about section. And then this is one that I find people miss out a lot on, is biography. Write this in first person. You know, if I hop onto somebody's biography and it says, um, Alex Sherman is a, you know, a polished sales professional who has X amount of years and, okay, who's writing this? I, I don't know. And, and I, I don't get a feeling of who, what Alex is really like. So think about writing it in first person and think about when people land on your biography and they don't know you, what do you want them to 
to, to, to interact with. So I have a, you know, welcome, nice to meet you. And then I have it. And I also use bullet points. And the reason why I use bullet points is because it's easier for you to get the information you need quickly when you're scanning someone's biography. So you go, okay, uh, this person has, you know, sales and commercial lending and mortgage broker, whatever. Okay, great. That's the guy I need. So if you write it kind of like a big long paragraph, it's not as easy for people to pull out your highlights. So I would recommend um, that bullet points in biography is great. So this is what my personal profile looks like. Um, so you can see I have an avatar on the left hand side and it overlaps that skinny little banner. And then I've got some little emoticons with my um, title and description. So I'm gonna hop over to LinkedIn quickly right now. I'm gonna show you around LinkedIn, show you how to update a few of these things. So bear with me. All right, perfect, that worked. Okay, can you all see my LinkedIn profile okay? Okay, perfect. All right, so when you're um, on LinkedIn, it's very easy for you to edit your profile. This is what your profile will look like when you land there. This little pencil here is what you want to push. Hold on. And then that's where you can edit things like your avatar. And it, it says what's recommended. I believe it's skinnier than that, but you can use that. This one, again, if you want to change your avatar, this is where you would change that. And it actually allows you to like zoom in and zoom out. So again, you gotta be careful about what kind of picture you're using um, to make sure that, you know, if I had a picture that was too close up, I'm, it might end up looking like that, which is not super attractive. So just think about that when you're doing your profile image. Um, okay, and if we go down, this is your headline. So there's not a lot of room in the headline. I would say there's like two lines. So really think about what you wanna be found for in your headline. So for me, I wanna be found for being a social media marketing expert and a keynote speaker. Um, but if you want to be found for sales or you want to be found for CEO or whatever, put those in your headline. Don't make it too wordy because if you start going, and I do this and that, um, no, because People want to see your name and a quick headline to know exactly who you are, what you do. So that's, an, that's what I would recommend for your headline. And then your position, education, industry. So you can change all of this. Let me go down, discard changes. Okay, and then when I'm talking about services, this is what I was talking about. So right below here is providing services. So you can choose up to 10, and as you type them, they will fill in or you'll, they'll tell you, you you've had the maximum amount. So um, I think it's gonna say you've reached the maximum amount of services. So if I wanted to do that, I would just go back in here. Um, so I'll just take that one off. So if you click on it, it takes it off, and then you add a service, you can say mm, sales or something. Um, business analytics, real estate. I think I must have it there already. So I'll just say training, apply. And so that's how easy it is to add those terms. So when you start typing them in, make sure you have the maximum amount, those 10 services so that you can be found for those as well. Okay. Um, and this is the about section that I was talking about. So this is nice to meet you. Here's who I am. Here's what I do. Here's how to reach me. Here's all of my social media connections. So this is, this is what I'm talking about, about making it easy for people to see exactly who you are and what you do quite quickly. Okay. A um, couple more things I want to show you. Okay. And when you go down here, you got to make sure that, well, your activity, so when you do any posts or you comment on anything, that's where it is and you can see all of your activity by clicking here and you can go into any of the posts that you've done. That's where your activity is. Experience, so you can add experience by using the plus button and then you can edit it by using this little pencil. Um, 
You can add things like presentations that you've done. You want to make sure this is filled out properly so that people can see at a glance what your experience is and your education. I want to scroll down here a little bit more. Um, skills and endorsements. So people can endorse you for all kinds of skills. So I've got a bunch for social media and advertising and then recommendations. So this is another one I want to talk about quickly is um, if you're going to ask somebody for a recommendation, you can go down here, scroll down and click ask for a recommendation. And then you type in your thing. Who do you want to ask for a recommendation? Okay, perfect. So I ask him. So select the relationship. Um, so work with Chris or whatever. So Christopher is client of mine. Great. So the position, here's the position next. And then you would personalize this. So I would recommend if you're going to ask for a recommendation, you personalize this. Like, thanks for the webinar. That was awesome. Um, so something like that. So I would recommend always personalizing your ask for any recommendations because then they understand like how do they meet you? Why do you want them to recommend you? This is really important. I'm going to zip back up here because something's very cool that I think you might want to put on your website and it's a profile badge. So a couple of things you can do. So number two, you can, or number one, you can get an uh, custom URL. That's what this is here. And you can personalize that by hitting this little pen. And so that's how it will look. So as long as it's available, it would be linkedin.com slash IN slash your name, your company, whatever it is. So you can easily get yourself a custom URL. The other thing you can do is get a Sorry. Hold on. Sorry, I lost it. I want to show you where you can get yourself um, a profile badge as well. I don't know if you've heard of that, but it's something that you can put on your website and it looks great. So, okay. Profile badge right here. So when you scroll down, sorry, it got lost in a whole bunch of this stuff. So when you're on your, uh, pu your public profile settings, scroll down to this public profile badge. Okay. And when you create a badge, it will give you all kinds of options like this, which look pretty darn cool. So you can put that on your website. Um, it's important for you to grab these codes for your website designer to put them on your website. But yeah, that's an easy way for you to put it on your website and then more people can connect with you that way. Okay, so now go back to my presentation. Okay, and we're, oh, we're not back, just a minute. Technology, hold on. Okay. Perfect. So that is how you get your LinkedIn custom URL and a profile badge. Again, you can select any way you want it to look on the left or on the right. Those are the skinny ones, or you can do more of a square look. Um, I love this idea because, again, it's just another place for people to connect with you. How are we doing for time? Oh, we're good. Okay, awesome. So, so some people think that LinkedIn is all about me. So I'm going to share all my content. I'm sorry I'm harping on this a little bit, but it's not about you. Okay. Um, it's about your target market, your community. What's important to them? Um, you know, is it golf? So we were talking about that earlier, like, you know, um, or is it um, a business meeting or is it something that's happening in Edmonton? Maybe we're talking about businesses reopening or how to keep your staff safe. What are you talking about that is interesting to your community? And I like to talk about the Marketing RX 7030 rule of thumb. 
So how that works is 70% is on brand, timely, and designed to inspire and influence your target audience. So it's not about me. Maybe it's about, um, um, you know, I'll, I'll give you an example. So free social media tips, Edmonton events, healthy living, mental wellness, all of those kinds of things I can be sharing. Um, and consider that faces and colors stand out. And also contrasting colors work really well. So what do I mean by that? Contrasting colors are like a black and white that really pops. If you have a gray on a white background, it's not gonna show up very well, so be mindful of that as well. But really, that 70-30 rule is what you want to be focused on. So if you're gonna be posting, let's say you're posting five times a day, or sorry, five times a week, like once a day, I would say maximum would be one of those posts would be about you and your business. So let me show you how that works. So the 30%, that 30% of content is about you, your business, testimonials, client profiles, staff profiles, all of these things about you. Yeah, this is your time to shine. So it's a 70-30 rule. So think about that when you're creating your content. You know, Gary Vaynerchuk, I don't know if anybody knows this guy, but he's very famous. He swears a lot, so I don't, <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't like some of what he does, but I like some of his content. So he has this book called Jab, 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 Right Hook. Now, although I don't like the idea of you knocking out your customers, um, the idea is that you're going to jab, 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 jab with some information and maybe some free stuff and maybe some value, create that inter, inter, um, the interest connection curiosity, and then boom, you're going to right hook and say, hey, here's what I have to offer you in case you need that. So think about the kind of pain that you solve for your customers and speak to that when you're doing your right hook. Um, so hopefully those jabs are creating that know, like, and trust for your brand so that when you're ready to land a right hook, they already do know, like, and trust you. And if they need your product or service, you're on their shopping list. It's the ultimate of branding. So when, you know, I've had this, you know, when I was in radio sales, it was really funny. I had a jewelry store and I would say, when does your customer need your product? Like, when do they need jewelry? And he would say Valentine's Day or Christmas or anniversary or weddings. Here's the thing. We can never predict the moment of need. I want you to understand that you can never, ever, ever predict the moment of need. So social media helps you build that top of mind awareness. And that is the ultimate of branding and social media helps you get there. So that again, you are the one who comes to mind when they need a renovation, um, a realtor, um, commercial um, real estate, um, whatever it is that you're selling, they're like, this guy. I want to talk to them because I like them, I like what they do on social media, and I know how to connect with them. Social selling is essential in business today. No longer can you rely on just like the traditional media anymore. So participating in those online discussions, sharing content, industry trends, getting referrals from clients, and working to be an expert in your field is huge. Um, you know, you can connect with um, industry experts to build that credibility. Um, and then you can also engage and contribute value. So again, we're back to that value proposition. We're not selling, we're contributing value. So even though most salespeople agree that this is a step they need to take, um, it can be time consuming if you have quotas and it doesn't yield quick results. So there are other tools that you can use to get more sales and grow your business. One of them is the Sales Navigator. 
I don't know if you've heard of this one before, um, but it can be used to find your clients and get those leads. Um, it can align with your buyers, create demand, and you can use those safe searches for drip marketing campaigns. So yes, Sales Navigator is a great tool if you want to like get in there and start connecting with clients that may not be already in your um, social circle on LinkedIn. But keep in mind, there is no straight line from ad to sale, and there is no straight line from a LinkedIn post to a sale. They say oftentimes right now it takes between eight and 10 business touches before anyone does business with you today. And that is a long time. <laughs> That's a long time for you to sit there and go, okay, you know, I, and so a touch, what's a touch? A touch could be, um, they saw your post on LinkedIn. Um, maybe they went to your website. Um, maybe they got an email from you. Maybe they've talked to somebody about you. Um, maybe they see you conversing on LinkedIn. Conversation has to happen again in order for you to build that know, like, and trust in your community. And then you're going to get the sale. So I would recommend don't broadcast, engage. So stop worrying about what am I gonna say? How am I gonna tell everybody about all the great things about me? Stop being that guy at the party because nobody likes that guy at the party that won't start talking about himself. Start engaging. Um, you know, social media is not a build it and they will come medium. You have to get out there and start having those conversations. Look for people to connect with. You know, think about who do you respect and admire and then start finding those people on LinkedIn and valuing what they're putting out there. Um, you know, who do you want as a client? Um, you know, comment on their posts genuinely and like, don't be pushy, but get out there and start engaging and start building yourself as that go-to expert in your field. So here are a few content ideas, you know, more than just one post with a photo, you can do multiple photos in a post. Now, I would recommend if you do that, wait for all the photos to load to make sure they look really good together, <laughs> especially if you're doing on mobile. Sometimes they look cut off and you can edit that. Videos. So you can do up to 10 minutes in length right now or live video. And I would recommend if you're doing videos, you use captions because oftentimes people are on LinkedIn and they're seeing it, maybe your video with the sound off because they're in an office, etc. So have captions and make it shorter rather than longer. You can include a link to a full video if you want, but I say 30 seconds to a minute is about as long as you want your video to be. Graphics articles, links, text only, and polls. Polls are fun. I just did this one the other day, and I just said, are you back to work at your office yet? And, you know, 90% said they're still working from home. What I love about polls is it encourages that interaction with you, right? You're asking a question. So instead of like, <laughs> it was funny, before we started this call, you can ask a question, you can make a statement, like ask a question so that people will want to interact with you. So for content ideas, um, here's a place that you can get free content. So free high resolution videos and images. So I just saw recently that they have these quick short videos. Pexels.com is where you want to be. It's, it's an amazing network and yes, you can use them for free. You don't want to be taking images from somewhere else because you can get caught and then you can get fined. So just be really careful if you're sharing images that aren't yours. Either give, um, give that credit to the person who created that image or use the royalty free images like this or videos. Like, so this is, this is one of the videos that I, I found, which I thought was fun, because we all want to stack up those dollar bills we're getting <laughs> from the LinkedIn that we're doing, right? Um, so do some research on your own. Think about what kind of content you like. What do you like to comment on? What do you like to share? And then create that content for yourself. It's really easy to do, um, but it takes time to see what you like. And size does matter. This is interesting. So it used to be that on LinkedIn, it had to be just a rectangle size, but now 
you can use Square or even a story format. So on the left, you'll see um, I included a Square of image of a coffee mug. And this again was from Pexel. So you see it's a really nice high resolution image. And it's the sizing can be 2048 by 2048. What I like about that is it's taking up more real estate in the LinkedIn feed. So you're gonna be more like noticeable, right? And the same on the right hand side here, I've got a story image and that one is 1080 by 1920. Again, you're taking up more real estate in the LinkedIn feed, which is awesome. It used to be cut off, it's not anymore. So I would recommend experimenting with some of these sizes. So how do you pronounce this? <laughs> I love this. Um, I want you to type uh, if you pronounce it with a soft J. So type J or G if it's a hard G. I want to see what people think. Okay, well, interestingly enough, Jif did this fun little um, <laughs> Jif, but it isn't Jif, as you see. Jif is like the peanut butter, it's GIF. So anyone who typed G, hard G, GIF. So from Alex Chung, who's the owner, he says it's at Giphy. We know there's only one GIF and it's peanut butter. And if you say GIF, with hard G, yes, you're right. So there you go. A couple more minutes. Hashtags on LinkedIn, yes or no to hashtags. Um, this was recently introduced on LinkedIn. And yes, it definitely helps on LinkedIn. And I'm going to tell you why right here. So it helps you reach a larger audience. And why wouldn't you want to do that? Why wouldn't you want to get found? You know, you expand your network. So greater reach means more people are going to see your content and potentially want to connect with you and your business. Bigger exposure to your company message. You should be using every method to maximize your exposure on all of your platforms. And if LinkedIn is one of them, get out there and do that. And of course, you can target your audience more specifically. Um, you can gain numbers in terms of reach, but you can also use hashtags to specify your audience. So for me, if I want to get found in social media, I'm using the hashtag social media. For events like this one, um, you know, if it was a bigger event, we could create an original hashtag that will help people find all of the content in one place. So a hashtag, if anybody doesn't know what, really what a hashtag means, Simplest terms, it's like a file folder that everything in that file folder is going to be in that folder. And when you click on the hashtag, boom, it opens up. So for example, hashtag YEG, huge folder or hashtag Edmonton. Um, so how do you want to be found? You can um, use those hashtags and then create an original one so that all of the content for that event is in that hashtag. And then you can trend. We were trending for ACG um, when Stephen Harper was there last year, and we were trending across Edmonton as the biggest trending hashtag on Twitter. And you can do the same on LinkedIn, so why wouldn't you want to do that? Three to five hashtags is recommended, so don't go crazy. Three to five. And then how do you find out which ones you should use? Because you're thinking, okay, great, I have to use hashtags. Which ones should I use? So I recommend searching other people and businesses and see what they use, like the similar ones to your business. You can use a program like Hashtagify Me to search those hashtags and like see how they ripple out, like which other ones you should be using. And then this one, go to the top of your toolbar and search a hashtag and see how popular it is before you start using it. Um, and you can follow hashtags as well. So yes, hashtags, is a big yes. Another thing you can do is you can tag people or businesses on LinkedIn. And here's how you do it. You type in, when you're doing your post, leave a space after your last word, or maybe return, go on a different line, and type at and then the name. You need to make sure you leave a space in the name, otherwise it's not gonna find that person. Same with like Marketing Rx, you need to leave a space there to find it, and then you can click, and then it will sort of 
um, be a different color and then that person or business will be notified that you tagged them. I think it's a great way for you to can like include people in your posts. I did that when I was posting about this webinar coming up. I was tagging Christopher and also Tom Dean. And so yes, do that, but be careful. Don't do it too much because I have seen some people who just tag you all the time and like message you, comment on my stuff. Just be mindful of making sure it's on brand and it's relevant to this person and then go ahead and tag them. The art of connecting on LinkedIn is awesome too, but think about the way you're going to do this. So it's easy for you to find somebody like, for example, you were at an event and you found somebody that you really hit it off with at a business event. So you go onto LinkedIn and you type at the top of the search bar to find their name. When you find them, you click on connect, but to the right there, you see where it says you can customize this invitation. You do want to customize it because you want to say, hey, I met you at ACG and I really look forward to connecting with you rather than like just the random Kimberly Allison would like to connect with you. It's kind of cold. Do you remember who I am? Um, and then this is a golden rule. Please do not sell on the first conversation. <laughs> Nothing drives me nuts more that I finally go, yeah. And then I've got Christopher going, okay, do you want to buy something from me? I'm out. And like a huge hard sell paragraph. Don't do that. Just connect. And then if you want to build your credibility and be known as that go-to expert, publish articles on LinkedIn. It's super easy. So where you have, you know, what do you want to say? There's an area there for you to say publish an article. It's good to be mindful of the article header image. So that's the image that's going to be at top of the article. Make sure that the image is centered because sometimes the edges get cut off when it's on mobile. And you can use three hashtags in your article as well. And then cross share it. You know, take your article from LinkedIn and share it on Twitter or Facebook and create a little bit more reach. Um, so that's how you can create your credibility and be a go to expert. Um, always be connecting and reacting. So I don't know if you've seen this before, but you don't always just have to click like. So when you're on LinkedIn and you see somebody's post, if you hover over the, the um, like icon, you will get like, celebrate, love, insightful, or curious. So that's kind of fun. You can, you know, pick whichever kind of reaction you want um, instead of just the the easy one, which is like. Um, I have a couple more minutes to dive into LinkedIn business pages. I apologize, Tom, if I'm a little bit later than <laughs> expected here. Um, do you need one? So what are the benefits of a business page over a personal profile? This is a big one. You can get found. So, and it's easier for people to connect with you and follow your business page rather than connecting with you personally. Um, so, you know, um, you meet someone at an event, they're not sure if they want to connect with you, but they want to find your business, they can find you on LinkedIn. You can get followers. Um, as I said, you, they don't need to connect with you personally. It's more of that soft introduction. And this is a big one. You can get tagged for bigger reach. Um, so we manage companies' events for them with social media, like ACG, for example. And if we were um, maybe doing a photo of somebody who had a booth there, a business, let's say it's Royal Bank, and we go to tag them on LinkedIn and they're not there, that's a missed opportunity. So people can tag you and tag your business, and that'll grow your reach in your profile. And then it's a great place to feature your team, job openings, it's great for recruitment, it's great for retaining staff as well. So it's just another layer of social media marketing that's a great way and it also just gives your business a little bit more credibility in the online world. So this is just an example of a client doubling their ticket sales year over year because we put together a strategy for them and manage their LinkedIn for their event. And I always like to say um, the best brands live in conversations and not ads. So yes, you do need ads, but that's not all you need to do.
you know, if you're in that conversation, that's where the money is. Here's my final power tip of the day. When sharing links on LinkedIn, use www, not HTTPS. And here's why. I'm going to show you why in a second. Um, because, you know, those spammy links that get auto-generated? This is why. So if you look on the left, Travel Alberta, they did this link. Now, the, it shows up on the bottom. It's fine. But you see that link. It's like that spammy L N K D blah, blah, blah. Don't do that. On the right, you'll see if you just use www, then it's your full link. And it looks way better. It looks a lot more professional for you. And um, yeah, you're going to stand out as a rock star on social media. And you know something a lot of people don't know. And so that is it. Thank you for joining me for LinkedIn. I know it was a lot of information coming at you very quickly. What time is it? It's quarter after. How did I do? That was good. That was good. I definitely learned, uh, learned a few things I did not know for sure. Um, <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, so let's, let's open it up. I think we have time for probably three or four questions. Um, I see one for, for Pro in the sidebar. Uh, it says, Kimberly, thank you for the presentation. I have a quick question. I go onto LinkedIn literally once a month. I know that I should go on more uh, often and somewhat inspired to do so now after your presentation, but I'm not sure I will follow up. Is there any real benefit to me joining LinkedIn Premium over a free service uh, they keep offering the free one month trial? Mm. Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, I'm not on the premium, and of course, LinkedIn's always going to want to try to sell you things. So, <laughs> so um, that's one thing. Um, you know, it depends. Like if you're wanting to use it for things like Sales Navigator and like reach out and um, connect with people that you actually aren't connected with, those kinds of things are are good for companies. But if that's not really what you're doing, you don't necessarily need that. Um, I think that particularly if you're not there a lot right now, I would say, um, not to do that. Sorry, I'm just gonna get out of here so that I can just sort of talk to you guys. Um, so I would say that, yeah, no, you don't necessarily need to do that. Um, but I think being active at least once a week um, would be really beneficial um, because then you're um, not gonna miss out. I mean, once a month, there's a lot of things that happen in a month. Look what happened with COVID. <laughs> So yeah, I would say be active, reach out. And I mean, even if you don't have content to share, just reach out and find other people that you can comment on and, and um, you know, find some interesting news articles to share. You don't always have to be creating content. Yeah. And uh, Faith, you have a question? I recommend using the same plug. Oh, yeah. Um, okay, you need to go to my LinkedIn profile and read the article, Don't Wear the Same Dress to Every Social Media Party. Um, I would recommend you don't do that. And here's why. Um, it can come across as lazy when you just cross share. Um, and also, each platform has its own unique voice. So, and I always talk about social media as parties, right? So, um, LinkedIn is your business breakfast. And so if you're talking LinkedIn versus Instagram versus Facebook, Facebook's like the keg party, it's more fun. And, you know, maybe you're sharing pictures of your dog or whatever. LinkedIn is very different. Um, and then Twitter, Twitter has, um, you know, hashtags, you have a, sh you should have shortened headlines. Um, so each network is different. Now that said, you can use that content and recreate it for another platform, but I wouldn't recommend cross sharing across the board. And if you recreate that content, schedule it for a week later or something or a couple days later. So people aren't like, wait a minute, you've posted the same thing everywhere. Yeah, I changed it up a bit, but it just, you know, and then what happens too is if I follow you on Facebook and I follow you on LinkedIn and I follow you on Twitter and you're posting the same thing on the same day at the same time, I go, well, why do I need to follow you everywhere? So you want to be mindful of that. Like there's reasons to follow you on these different platforms to get different content and you will find it's a totally different community on each network. Uh, Jim, I think. So no. <laughs> <laughs> Jim, if you have uh, a question, I saw it uh, up above there. If you want to, you want to ask it. 
You'll have to uh, unmute yourself, I guess. Yeah, hi, Tom. Thanks, Kimberly. Just wondering about goals and whether you, you know, set yourself a, a target of whether it be number of, you know, views per post or new followers per month. Um, you know, do you track your activity? Yes. And so, you know, that depends, you know, if you are creating a, a social media strategy for your business, then yes, you want to be mindful of tracking those kinds of things. And here's why too, is that you may find that, oh, actually, when I post um, a photo of Edmonton, it got huge reach. But when I posted a photo of, you know, a corporate building, it didn't get as much. So you can track things like time of day, you can track things like engagement, um, you can track things like, you know, shares, shares are gold if you can get them. But then you can track like what kind of content are these people really engaging with and create more of that. So it creates that area for you to yes, absolutely measure test. What do they say you can't improve what you don't measure. So yes, you absolutely can start testing that and you know doing a document saying okay like when i posted that this time with this kind of content it did really well this one didn't these hashtags did well absolutely you can track that with your social media strategy okay thanks very much mm -hmm. you're welcome okay uh anybody else questions for kimberly um can i ask a quick question mm -hmm. Yeah. Can everyone hear me? Yeah. All right. So the hashtag thing is kind of a, 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 a mystery for me. I always felt people just make them up, put hashtag and just make up a word. So you were saying um, if you wanted to reach people in Edmonton, yes, you do hashtag YG, but where do you find these hashtags? Where do you, where do you find the hashtags? Um, on LinkedIn, you mean? Yeah. Oh, you just did yeah. it at the top of the search. Um, so you type, sorry, say that again. So if you type hashtag YEG or type hashtag Edmonton or hashtags, you know, social media, um, it will pull up all the content related to that hashtag. Oh, I see. And so when okay. you use one too, like, so if you see a hashtag, there's another way you can do it. If you see a hashtag in a post, because you it's it's lit up a different color i think it's blue so when you click on that hashtag yeah. you'll see all of the different content relevant to that hashtag mm. thanks you're welcome and uh chris i think you had a question yeah kimberly i was just uh wondering about the social selling index that linkedin provides and uh it's uh whether whether you feel that it, it accurately represents a person's reach <laughs> i don't know <laughs> I, <laughs> I don't know i don't own linkedin <laughs> um numbers can lie right so uh i remember i saw a cartoon character and it was this guy that was like yeah we got like a 98 percent click-through rate on our email and it was like, they all clicked unsubscribe. So, you know, I don't know, like <laughs> numbers, numbers can lie. Um, certainly it's something to be mindful of, but I, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know about 100% um, accuracy on all those things and how does it affect you and your business, right? So you gotta be thinking about all that strategically and think, okay, like, is that, is that in line with my business? And sometimes those stats can also be skewed because um, LinkedIn is not only, you know, Canada, but it's the States and all over the world. And so even when I go to conferences and they have content that they're sharing, I think, well, how relevant is it to Canada and how relevant is it to Edmonton versus um, the world? So I'm not sure. I don't know if I answered that right. So I think we have time for one more question if somebody wants to be. Question? Yeah. I can? Yeah. Um, Kimberly, um, who should, should you be, like, who, who do you connect with on LinkedIn? Like, should you be accepting everybody's requests to connect or what's kind of a, is there a rule of thumb? That's a good question. Um, <laughs> I'm always really leery of that. 
And again, that's why I said, oh my gosh, if you connect, don't sell on the first thing, because I see that a lot, and I'm like, bye-bye. Um, so I don't. I, whenever I get a LinkedIn connection request, I look at that person's profile and go, okay, like, what do I know this person, first of all? Um, would it be a person I want to connect with? Like, what's the value for me? And then if there isn't any, I usually don't. Um, uh, yeah, I'm mindful of that. Some people connect with everybody. I'm just, I'm just not that person. I guess it's up to you on how you want to treat it. I mean, I like to think about it also in the business sense. Like, so with what I do, could this person maybe be a potential client of mine? Maybe that's why they're reaching out. Um, so I'm sort of, I, I think about that. Think about what's the benefit for them? What's the benefit for me? Um, is it a real person? Is it a bot? Is it somebody from like, another part of the world that would never do business with me, then why would you want to connect with them? Sometimes people game the system as well. So what they'll do is they'll go, oh, Karen is connected with XYZ. So I'm going to get her to connect with me and then I'm connected with all of her line of people. So I don't know, I'm just a little bit um, more cautious of that. So I guess it's up to you, but I know some people who just accept everybody. So I guess it's up to how you want to run your own LinkedIn profile. Now that said, if you do accept somebody and then you go, oh my gosh, I didn't mean to, you can remove that connection. Okay, okay thank you. You're welcome. Nice to see you, Karen. Okay, so um, I think we'll, <clears throat> excuse me, I think we'll leave it at that. Uh, thank you for the, the presentation, Kimberly. I really appreciate it. Um, well, thanks, to every, yeah, thanks to everyone who attended. Um, we'll be posting a copy of this video to the Vantage Club's uh, website. So if people want a, a link, uh, they can reach out to, um, I, I guess, myself, Chris Robot, or Kelly Kramer for, for more information. Um, I wanted to also thank uh, Chris for uh, bringing Kimberly in um, and, and thanks as well to uh, Brian Esler, Darren Lundgren, Kelly Kramer and Gerald Finman um, for all of your work in keeping these events going. Um, so thanks again, Kimberly. Um, have a great week. Everyone. Everyone. We'll uh, see you again, hopefully in person soon. That'd be great. Thank you. Thanks, Take care, guys. everyone. Yeah.